Hey, this is James C. Khan, and I'm just going to do a quick video about frame buffers because I realized I hadn't talked about them before, and I don't know if there's a good video already out there on them. So right now, uh, if you don't know, by default, OpenGL uses a default frame buffer. So even if you didn't realize it, you're using a frame buffer already. It's just the default one, and it's taken care of behind the scenes. However, you can create your own frame buffers. And so right now what we're looking at is a, a scene just being rendered to the default frame buffer. Um, but we can create our own frame buffers and render to those instead. Uh, a way to think of that is you're like you're rendering off screen. You're rendering to a different frame buffer that's not actually visible on the screen. Why would you want to do that? Well, there's plenty of things you can do with frame buffers. A uh, popular thing is for post-processing. If I wanted to blur the entire screen, then I would capture the entire screen in a frame buffer and then I could then blur the image or the texture that comes from that frame buffer. Uh, or I could apply other effects on it like chromatic aberration. Lots of different things you can do there. Uh, you can also use frame buffers for like mirrors in a game. Uh, you can use them to create reflections and refractions on water. Because the idea, let's say if you wanted to capture a reflection or refraction on water, you need to render the world from a different point of view, from a different camera. So you would do that off off screen to a different frame buffer. Hey, here's what the here's what the sky would look like from this angle at the, that you're looking at the water. So that's why you would want to use a frame buffer. And then today, uh, we're just going to go through and create one, render to it, and maybe just tinker around with that a little bit. So if you don't understand them already, hopefully you'll have a little better understanding after this video. All right, so we're going to jump right in. Uh, this is the project I'm going to use. I pretty much pulled this code over from. Um, a basic libgdx 3d test i won't be really talking about what's here um cover, covered these kind of things in videos before but the quick rundown is we've got a model batch we set up an environment our camera we have a first person camera controller and uh, we load in this model of the um the little scene with the house that we saw earlier kind of lo it looks like this here that's all we have uh starting off so what we're going to do is try to uh, capture that scene, that 3D scene, into a frame buffer. So to do that, I'm going to come to the top here, and we're going to create a new object here, a frame buffer variable. And for now, we'll just call it uh, frame buffer. Now, if you, if you hear FBO, you can do that too. You can call it that frame buffer object. You might see that as well. If you see someone say FBO, that's what they're talking about. So we'll have this variable here. Now let's go down to our constructor and I'm just going to create a new method called build FBO and we're going to pass in two values uh, width and height value okay, height there we go and I'll enter so we can create the method okay and so we're going to go uh, FBO equals and we'll say uh, new frame buffer Oops. So if we take a look, this takes in a format. So if we start typing that in, it'll come up here. Format, we'll go RGBA. And our width, height. And since we're going to be capturing a 3D scene, we're going to pass in true for the has depth value. So that will create our frame buffer. And now we have this inside our render method. We're clearing the... Uh, clearing the screen with this sky color and then we go ahead and just render the model that model out to our model batch uh, so what I'm going to do is I want to wrap this in in the FBO so we'll call FBO.begin FBO.end so what what's gonna happen now is we're not going to see the uh, the scene anymore we're not going to see anything actually it's gonna be just a black screen because all of this code here the clearing of the screen and the rendering of the model is all happening inside of this FBL, uh, this frame buffer, instead of on our main frame buffer. Um, and if we if we want to take a look at this code, we could see that we're calling some open, we're making some OpenGL calls to to bind this other frame buffer. So we're going to be rendering to that frame buffer instead, and that's why now we we can't see anything. To fix that, uh, we can use a sprite batch, right? Because when you capture something in the frame buffer, it can have different attachments. Won't go too much into that right now. But the main thing is it's gonna have a color attachment. Um, so if we uh, come down here, 
let's try to render out what the frame buffer has captured. And we could do that using a sprite batch. Now I already had a sprite batch set up on the project. Um, in our resize method, I'm updating that sprite batch as well. So we just call sprite batch begin, draw, and we can pass in a texture. So the way to get the frame buffer texture is just to go FBO dot get color buffer texture. So that's the that's going to be our color buffer, and that's what we want in this case. And so we'll, where we're going to start drawing at, we'll start at the bottom left corner. And so we got to provide a width, right? So in this case, um, let's see, we could go, let's get the texture up here. We'll say FBO text equals FBO dot get color buffer texture. Okay. And let's just do this instead. So we'll say um, FBO text, I got texture here. And then we can go fbo text dot width and you know what yeah let's start with this we're probably going to change this but to prove a point um let's do that for now so what we're going to do is we're going to render out the size of the frame buffers texture is what we're going to do now right now it should be the full screen because when we instant uh instantiate our frame buffer we are passing in the the full screen here the size of the of the full application should i say and we're going to want to do one other change. Um, let's see. So this constructor here, the UU, uh, UV, U2, V2. Uh, when you render to the frame buffer, it actually ends up... And let's just take a look. I'll show you why we need to do that. If we... Um, oh, we got an error. I didn't call sprite batch dot end. Okay, let's try this again. And I think I'm going to need to... Uh, screw, oh, oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, I think sprite batch is taking care of clearing the screen, so don't have to worry about that. But you can see that the uh, frame buffer, the texture that came out of that, is is upside down, and uh, that's normal. But to fix that, we can just go like this with our UV coordinates. Oops, zero zero one one, and let's try to run, let's try to run that again here and take a look. Okay, so yes, that is now the right side up. Um, there's some there's some issues that we're gonna have to resolve, and we'll get into that. I'm going to go to our desktop launcher and change the resolution here a little bit. Do 1280 by 720. So we have a widescreen. Okay. So right now what we're looking at is the texture that was captured by the frame buffer. As you can see, there's some there's some issues here and we'll resolve that. Uh, what, what we're seeing right now is this, I believe what's happening here is just a depth precision issue. Um, and I'll show you why that's happening if we go back. Now, if you're uh, if you're doing if you're doing 2D, if you're capturing the 2D, I don't think you would have this issue. This is more of an issue that you would have with 3D, and that's why I'm using 3D for this example, so that we can see this precision issue. Because I think I saw it come up, and someone asked on Discord the other day. So I'm like, hey, you know what? I should cover this. Um, so let's go look at our constructor so we can fix this problem. If I control click into the constructor for our frame buffer. You know, frame buffer is something that OpenGL provides. LibGDX is just uh, providing a convenient way for us to create it. Uh, and when we look at the constructor, what's happening behind the scenes, we can see that it actually uses a frame buffer builder. It adds this basic color texture attachment. If we say true for has depth, it adds a basic render depth buffer. First, I'm going to copy this code because we're going to want that. And then let's take a look at what add a basic depth render buffer does. And so it's passing in this, um, it's using this uh, GL20, um, uh, i trying to remember what we call these, it's not an enum, but it's a value for OpenGL. And you have this uh, GL depth component 16. And from what I understand, that 16 is 16 bit, which is, is a low precision. And I'm guessing LibGDX probably does that by default, uses a low precision because LibGDX was built around low-end devices and running on Android and running on HTML. But we're running on desktop and that precision is just not going to do for depth. Like I said, this is more of a 3D thing, but let's try and fix it. So I'm gonna paste that code that we got from the frame buffer constructor. And let's use that to make our frame buffer instead. So this allows us to have more control over how it's built. Okay, so we pass in our format and for our texture, our color texture attachment. 
And now we're going to have to change this. We don't want to do the basic render depth buffer. Uh, what, what all it does is call this other method. Add depth render buffer. So we're going to use that one instead. And we're going to pass in... Now, GL20, if we look at that, we only have two options. We have GL depth component 16 and depth component. If you use depth component, from what I understand, it's not going to work on Android. I don't think it's it's not valid on Android on uh, GLES. Um, now, interestingly, I've even though I have not enabled GL30 uh, in the configurations for this um, for this program here, if we call it the GL30 depth component 24, and this may work for some devices, it may not. I don't know for sure. Um, but in this case, I know my computer has OpenGL. Uh, three, it supports OpenGL 3.0. I can pass this value in instead. Let's get rid of this line. And instead, it'll be FBO equals frame buffer builder dot build. So that's how we're going to construct it now. Again, you know, you may have to do some additional testing depending on what kind of devices you are targeting. But this should give us better precision in our depth buffer. Now let's try to run it again. And here we go. And yeah, that looks much better. Uh, all those kind of, all those uh, depth issues, Z, it looks like it's almost like Z fighting. Uh, that Z fighting has gone away, which is great. Okay, so we now have our scene rendering to the frame buffer. Then we're taking the texture from that frame buffer and rendering it like we would any other texture with a sprite batch. But we still need to fix a couple things. If I run the application and try to resize it, the frame buffer does not resize currently, but we can fix that. What we'll want to do is on our resize method, we'll call build FBO, pass in the width and height, and then we can actually get rid of this right here in our constructor. Because uh, from what I understand, resize gets called on the application start as well. So we don't need to build two FBOs right at when the application starts up. What we'll also want to do is update this build FBO method. Uh, check if it's not equal to null. If it's not, then we want to dispose of the frame buffer first. And then we can go and, and rebuild it with the correct or with the new width and height values. Now, if we try and run the application again and resize it, there we go. The frame buffer is now resizing. So I think that covers the super basics of a frame buffer. Um, so in, now what we'll do is a little bonus. We're going to just tinker with the frame buffer a little bit to do, do something neat here. Because um, I, I do want to bring up one thing. With a frame buffer, you, you, you do lose something. Uh, so you lose a multi... Um, you use your MSAA, so your multi-sample anti-aliasing. You're going to miss out on that if you, if you were relying on that before when you render to a frame buffer. So if we take a look here, we can see the edges are are a little fuzzy, right? We don't have aliasing. We have we don't have anti-aliasing running anymore. Um, but if I go back and look at the desktop, I I had it turned on. We were passing in the samples here. Unfortunately, right now um, we. Uh, LibGX does not support multi-sampling in frame buffers. There is, it is being worked on, but it is not merged yet. So I just want to bring that up, um, that if you notice on 3D scenes particularly, that you, you've lost your, uh, your anti-aliasing, your MSAA. That's why with frame buffers, it's just not supported yet. That being said, we can actually kind of downscale or get some downscaled looks make it look pixelated we can just uh, one simple thing you can do with an fbo so i'm going to show you how to do that real quick uh, just for fun um, now where we're building the fbo if we want to kind of like make it look all pixelated looking what we can do is change the size of the frame buffer that we're rendering to in this case we're going to go really pixelated so i'm going to times the width and height by 0.25 and that alone won't fix, won't do what we want. We actually have to come down here. If you remember, we're taking the size of the FBO, and we're using that uh, when we, when we, or the of the texture, yeah, and we're using that when we render. Well, that's not going to work anymore because now we're rendering to a smaller texture. Uh, and if we want that pixelated look, what we'll want to do is change this to use 
uh, the current width and height of the application. Um, so it's going to stretch the image out. So what we've done now is we've rendered to this smaller FBL uh, frame buffer and now stretched it out to fit the whole screen. So, you know, that's just kind of one little example I wanted to show you. Uh, you may think that, well, if I've lost anti-aliasing, what if I upscale it? And that may or may not be the right term here, but what if we take it times it by two? So now we're rendering to a much larger frame buffer, which should make it crisper looking. And it does, but I'm not fully sure what kind of performance impacts that may bring, right? Because now you're rendering twice the size of your of you uh, of your screen and then downsizing that to fit does it make the edges look cleaner yes is it worth the performance maybe not there are other alternatives um like uh fxaa implementing anti-aliasing in a shader they take more work but uh, it would be much more performant than just doing this but i wanted to show you it in case you're thinking about it and talk about it so I think we'll leave it at that. That's all we're going to do for this video. Uh, like I said, very quick. I try to keep these videos short, so I didn't go into a whole lot. But hopefully it is an introduction to frame buffers if you've never seen them before. Thanks for watching.